I remember my first experience with a video game the way some people remember their first love. The game was called Pong. The machine was in a bowling alley, embedded in a yellow stand that looked like a snail's eye stalk. Pong was a simple electronic version of table tennis, but man was I hooked. I eventually graduated to more complex gaming experiences. My next love Jones was with a game called Myst. I tell you this to admit to my heaping serving of confirmation bias when it comes to advocating for video games. Fortunately, when talking about BTPs, my advocacy has a lot of independent empirical support. Brain trainings to this day are as simple as Pong and for good scientific reasons. Less complexity means fewer uncontrolled variables. You get cleaner numbers and clearer findings. The best ones measure something researchers call far transfer effects. Many less well-designed brain training games, and that's most of them, improve only one thing, your ability to do well on the brain training exercises. This unsurprising result is called near transfer. What you really want is bleed through, the ability to play a game and have it affect an unrelated cognitive process, perhaps changing processing speed or improving memory. That's the definition of the far transfer effect. I am pleased to report that playing a few simple lab design games has powerful far transfer effects on cognition as long as you play them the way the researchers intended. Let me describe one well-designed study employing a very simple speed of processing game. Imagine you are in front of a computer screen when two images flash suddenly and briefly into view, one in the center, one on the side. Your job is to answer questions about the experience. What object was in the center? What was on the side? Where on the screen did the peripheral image show up? In the true spirit of gaming, the better you get at answering these questions, the harder the game becomes. The images appear on the screen even more briefly. Pesky, distracting images show up. Your speed and accuracy are measured throughout. A group of researchers from Johns Hopkins and the New England Research Institutes were interested in the effects of this training not only on processing speed, but on possible effects on the chances of coming down with dementia, which is about as far a transfer effect as you can get. The researchers gathered a cohort of cognitively healthy seniors, average age 74 years. This was christened the ACTIVE, Advanced Cognitive Training for Independent and Vital Elderly Study. The cohort was randomly assigned into four groups. One group did nothing, the control. One got training to improve memory, and one got training to improve reasoning. The fourth group was exposed to the processing speed game for 10 sessions, each about an hour long, over five or six weeks. A random sampling also got booster exposures around one year and three years later. The researchers then set back for 10 years, waiting for the cohort to reach their mid-80s and looked for signs of dementia. The results were a bombshell. At the end of 10 years, people in the processing speed group were 48% less likely to get dementia than any other group. That's astonishing. For one thing, the subjects were exposed for less than a day's worth of total training, yet the effects echoed with a cognitive sonic boom 10 years later. That's what I call far transfer. For another, Subjects in the group who'd received training to boost memory showed no improvement in those skills, essentially a waste of time. This puts into stark relief the strength of the positive findings. This result has yet to be replicated, but it's still amazing, and it was not the first time researchers noted far transfer improvements.